you can kind of take a look. You can see how this works. I've been playing with the settings and uh, it doesn't work as good on my skin for some reason, but I've got it to where it will finally read the side cover. Um, this is just the preview. We haven't done anything. We've got a couple of settings over here. We've got the RGB camera and then the depth camera, which is kind of interesting. Okay, and we can see where we're at here. So I think we're gonna find a way of trying to think if I should hang it and rotate it or do the whole move around. Let's see how it looks. Yeah, see it's gonna get too much of a maybe not. Try that. It's going to pick up the uh, workbench here. But you can kind of see how that works. So the post processing was quite involved. I started using the RevoPop software and I was able to clean up some of the mesh cloud that way, but I just wasn't happy with the results. So doing some research, I found another software called MeshLab that's free. You'll see that here in a second. Um, and it took, I mean, quite a learning curve but I was much happier with the results. So I was able to take, uh, I ended up taking two scans, two different mesh clouds, uh, an inner and an outer and connected them. And here's the end result. Uh, also had some really nice smoothing tools that helped clean up a lot of the noise from the scan and uh, looks pretty good. Um, you, can see, you can see the, the crack, so I mean, this is, kind of my first attempt. There's many things I would go back and change, uh, probably physically clean up the side cover first, repair it as best I can to get rid of that kind of stuff. But uh, you can kind of see what it looks like and how it creates the STL file. All of the little triangles is kind of, kind of slick. Once it was an STL file, I was able to load the STL file in the 3D printer software. <laughs> it barely fit. It took forever for it to process, but uh, you can see the uh, animation here of the layers, um, estimated time. It took quite a long time to print. Um, looks like it had pretty decent quality, as you can see, and now time to print. Uh, took it several hours, left it going overnight, and finally, we had her done. Let's clean it up and see how it looks. Right, side cover time. So here's the aluminum one I made. This one's actually gonna go on this side with a muffler. We're gonna figure out how to mount that up in there. Um, this is the original cover. 
that I 3D scanned, and here is the first attempt at a print. Did a way better job on the inside than it did on the outside just because of the way I printed it. I'm working on printing a couple of different orientations to see how it turns out, but this is pretty darn close if you look at the, if you try and line up all the points. Well, I guess it's backwards, but um, it looks like it's gonna fit great. So we're gonna get the bike spun around, set her on there and uh, see how she fits. It fits perfectly. Um, obviously the color is a horrible match. Uh, that's just what I had in the printer. Um, and the outside surface is pretty rough. I think it's kind of interesting. You can actually see where the crack is. I spent quite a bit of time trying to smooth this out digitally. Um, but it's still on both sides. You can see it kind of dents in. I'm gonna try cleaning this one up and just see what we can do with it. Uh, maybe try some acetone fuming. Um, I am planning on putting another metal side plate, uh, number plate on this side and not using this on this bike, but there's always another Z50, right? 